Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar on exploring careers in counseling and mental health professions. My name is Holly Syrup and I'm actually going to be leading you through the webinar today. Um, I hope to be able to answer uh, many of your questions throughout the webinar, but uh, certainly at the end we will also leave time for any questions that people may have. So let's begin. I'm going to talk to you about our department. Again, it's Counseling and Mental Health Professions, which really is a conglomerate of four different areas. We have counseling programs, creative arts therapy, marriage and family therapy, and rehabilitation counseling. And I'm going to go into detail on each of these different possibilities that you might want to consider. So the first one I'm going to talk about are the uh, programs in the counseling program. And the first is in uh, Master of Arts in Mental Health Counseling. So many times people will say, what exactly is a mental health counselor? And you can see here um, that the evidence-based methods are used in counseling and psychotherapy. Most of the time you'll find that mental health counselors work with individuals, but they also have families and groups in their scope of practice. What's interesting is many people will ask, well, don't I need a doctorate degree to do this kind of work? And the fact is, is that in 2006, New York State changed the requirements for licensure, and they um, really included now mental health counselors, marriage and family therapists, creative arts therapists, and uh, well, we have counselors are certified, but then they also can be mental health counselors. Um, and they are licensed with a 60-credit master's degree, and they are licensed to be able to do the work, some of the work, um, that used to take a doctorate degree in the past. So you're going to find that mental health counselors, they do address mental health concerns that would be similar to what you would expect, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, eating disorders, trauma, um, decision making, stress, and crisis management. Um, where do they work? Well, they do work in hospitals. Uh, they work in outpatient uh, care centers, nursing and residential care facilities. Uh, they work in for the government, but probably the thing that most is most impressive for a lot of people who are thinking about the career is because the licensure change, they are able to um, open up a private practice, work in private practice, as well as third-party billing with the HMOs. So what are the educational requirements? Uh, for to be licensure eligible, eligible, it is 60 credits of coursework and 600 hours of that is your internship, the capstone internship, and that's supervised and in the field. Um, what does that mean? That means that when you graduate, you're eligible for licensure. You would get a limited permit after that time, and then you'd be able to be employed under that limited permit, and you'd need to complete 3,000 hours towards full licensure, and of course, a pass the licensure exam as well. Uh, this is just a little bit of a requirement regarding uh, the licensure requirements that are for um, uh, a mental health counselor um, as well as a so clinical social worker and the masters of social work. So many times people will say to me, what's the difference between social work and mental health counseling? Here you can see this is from the website of the New York State um, Education and it's also on the NIMCA, which is the New York Mental Health Counselors Association website. You can see some of the differences here in the actual requirements and the clinical preparation. Uh, when we talked to one of our internship supervisors, one of the major differences that they noted is that the mental health counselors in their particular setting were doing much more of the clinical work, the group work, the individual one-on-one, -on -one. and some of the uh, social work interns were doing much more of the case management and the discharge case management, so helping people as they were leaving um, the system and getting the support they needed back into the environment. Also in the counseling program is our school counseling program. It's a master of science in education. Um, school counselors are what we used to call guidance counselors. Uh, some people still do call them guidance counselors. We call them school counselors. Um, and of course, school counselors help to develop social skills and any kind of transition or success in school. Uh, probably most notable in high school is uh, really working with students who are interested in the transition to either college or the transition to the world of work. Uh, they work obviously with parents and teachers, administrators, and the community. There are K through 12 uh, guidance counselors or school counselors, uh, elementary school counselors. There, there are some elementary school counselors, although it's not a requirement by law in New York State. Uh, there are some positions. Um, most commonly, you see them in middle school and high school, and then they're both in public and private schools as well. 
We also have a track in College Student Development Counseling. This is also an MSED in counseling. Uh, college Student Development Counselors are those that work, again, in the transition and the growth and development of college students. Most often they work in the areas of career counseling, academic advisement, student activities perhaps, residential life, but they work actually similar to the school counselor K-12, through they would work really through uh, the college years. And they would, their work settings obviously are colleges and universities, and most often in the career center advisement, sometimes admissions and student affairs. So overall, when I talked about those programs, which are the MS Ed in counseling, so not the mental health, but the school and the college, uh, that, that prog those programs are 42 credits, and they ha have a supervised internship of 200 hours, and that, again, is usually the capstone, meaning it's the last semester. The school counselors themselves are certified K through 12, and the college does not have a certification, but they would be doing their practicum and internship in a college setting and then be um, more able to work in the college setting. We also have a new addition to both the um, MA in mental health counseling and the MS Ed in counseling. Uh, we have the opportunity for students to earn their CASAC, which is a Certificate in Alcohol and Substance Abuse Counseling through the Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services in New York, OASAC. Sorry for all that, <laughs> a lot of letters. Um, but the KSAC credential is very important because it is a substance abuse focused credential. Um, it, unfortunately, substance abuse is a, is a growing area um, and it, the, those with KSAC credentials uh, provide treatment and support to help people, clients recover, but also with their families many times as well. Uh, the interesting thing about this program is the coursework is actually embedded into the, the actual 42 credits or 60 credits master's program. So it would mean uh, just in taking two electives that are specifically focused on substance abuse, two out of the three or four electives that, that um, you would be choosing to take. Where could you work with this credential? Um, substance abuse centers, prisons, probation, juvenile detention, detox centers, and again, um, for the mental health counselors in private practice. Let me move on to creative arts therapy. Um, we do offer a Master's of Arts in Creative Arts Therapy, and creative arts therapists uh, use the arts, uh, the creative process, um, to facilitate coping and healing um, and to uh, reconcile emotional conflicts. They usually use the visual arts, mini clay, sculpture, drawing, painting, but uh, you also find that they, they do courses in poetry and music and drama and dance, so there are some of those electives as well. Uh, most often they work with individuals, but they also work with groups. The work setting can be somewhat similar. The hospitals, psychiatric and rehabilitation centers, wellness centers, forensic crisis centers, seniors, also private practice, um, and many times you'll see creative arts therapists working with veterans. Just as you the educational preparation, this is also a licensure eligible program. It's a 53 credit program, and it also includes 600 hours of supervised internship. Our creative arts therapy program is approved by the American Art Therapy Association. And upon graduation, uh, students can apply for their limited permit licensure here in New York, and that's really their first step in gaining that, that licensure. We also have a marriage and family therapy program here at the university, and marriage and family therapists work with couples and families primarily through a systemic approach, and they try to help families deal with all sorts of developmental issues, um, but primarily uh, parenting strategies, coping with divorce, impact of grief, and anything really that can improve the family functioning. Those are the important pieces that they would work with in the marriage and family therapist. Uh, they work in community and mental health agencies, hospitals, child welfare agencies, juvenile justice programs, and often in private practice. For the marriage and family therapy program, it, again, it's licensure eligible. It's a 54 credit program, and they have a supervised internship of at least 300 contact hours, so it would be more hours than that, but 300 contact hours. Um, hours are spent by students doing therapy, um, are counted towards their 1,500 client contact hours required for licensure post-graduation. 
The final area I want to talk about is the Rehabilitation Counseling Program. There are actually two possibilities here. One is the MS Ed and Rehabilitation Counseling, um, and then there's the MS Ed Rehabilitation Counseling as well as Mental Health. So there's two um, different options in Rehabilitation Counseling. And Rehabilitation Counselors primarily work with students, our parents, our families and clients with emotionally and physical disabilities. And they really help these people to cope and to learn to live independently. Uh, they might be helping clients to overcome and manage personal, social, and professional effects of disabilities, unemployment, and independent living. And they're very often advocates for uh, their clients as well as for the entire profession. Where do they work? They work in rehabilitation centers, mental health clinics, rehabilitation hospitals, drug and alcohol agencies, correctional facilities, independent living centers, insurance companies, and definitely Veterans Affairs. So there's a little bit different in the educational uh, preparation. In the MS Ed uh, Rehabilitation Counseling Program, it is a 51 credit program, and it prepares students for the national certification, which is the CRC, Certified Rehabilitation Counselor. They, can, they also have the option of doing a 60 credit program, which includes the CRC, Certified Rehabilitation Counselor, as well as the uh, prepare students for the licensure. They become licensure eligible as well. Our program is accredited by CORE, which is the Council on Rehabilitation Education. So just to, if you're thinking about it, and I know that this is an explore your careers, if you're wondering why would I go into a field of helping or human services, uh, we feel as though not only is it a great uh, uh, field to consider, but it's also one of the top 100 jobs based on, in 2014, in U.S. News and World Reports. Uh, we see that it is definitely in the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics as um, an area that is going to be growing and growing faster in the coming years. And on ONET, uh, which is one of the biggest um, databases for employment, it lists employment for creative arts, marriage and family, rehabilitation counselors, mental health counselors, and substance abuse counselors as having a bright outlook in the future. Our program, you see a picture here of some of our creative arts uh, students. Uh, we do have a number of uh, student organizations because being part of our program is more than just in the classroom. We also have an out of classroom experience as well. So we have Chi Sigma Iota. Chi Sigma Iota is a chapter of the International Honor Society for Counselors. Um, and students, uh, rehabilitation counseling students and counseling mental health and school counseling students who have a 3.5 can apply to join the Honor Society. Uh, Creative Arts Therapy has the Catch Club. Counseling Club is with the counseling students. Marriage and Family Therapy has a club and Rehabilitation Counseling Student Association. What do these clubs do? Um, many times they bring in speakers, uh, they uh, attend conferences, they put on conferences, uh, they're very actively involved in the community. And what we find is it gives students a great way to network because they're going to be the people who are your club mates uh, today are going to be your colleagues tomorrow. And it's a real nice way. By bringing in speakers, they're able to network with the professionals as well. Admissions. Um, many times people say, well, how do I actually apply for, for these programs? Uh, right here you'll see our website, hofstra.edu backslash rad apply. Um, all, the programs have specific uh, prerequisites, and I would encourage you to look on the specific websites for those. But all of them are going to need your transcripts. We're going to be looking at your GPA, personal statement, three recommendation letters. Um, we do require an interview, a personal interview. Um, and if you're an international student, we do require the TOEFL. Now, for some programs, for uh, the school counseling, the MSN and counseling, and the MFT program, the GRE is required. For CAT, the portfolio is required. And for some of the programs, a resume is required. I will say this, though. If you feel as though you haven't taken the GRE in a few years, or you haven't taken math in a few years, and now you're going to go back and take the GRE, sometimes people get a little nervous about that. Um, just know that we don't look at any one area. We look at every application holistically. And we want to see who is the best fit for our program. 
Um, one of the things that you'll notice about our programs are that they are intentionally smaller, um, and we do that for a reason. Uh, we we want to make sure that you get the best experience and that the faculty can be very involved in your training as you move forward. And we'll, we feel very strongly that we are responsible for making sure that you are very well trained because you're going to go out there to help other people and uh, the faculty will sign off on your preparation for that at some point. I think if you asked me what is the difference about a Hofstra education, particularly in this graduate education, it is the personal touch and the individualized attention that our students get in the program. And I think you'll start seeing that when you start to apply. Um, people will be in touch. Uh, we do have a rolling admission, but we do encourage you to apply early, particularly if you're interested in any kind of the uh, scholarship uh, programs that are available. And there are some scholarship programs available, uh, some modest, uh, but it, it is it's something that I think if the earlier you apply, the more likely you'll be considered for those. There's also need-based through uh, the FAFSA form, and there are some graduate assistantships available on campus. My recommendation for anyone interested in a graduate assistantship is that you look on the Hofstra website under job opportunities and then under graduate assistantships. Uh, some of them are paid hourly in different departments and some of them do um, include tuition remission. Those are not as many, but certainly they're, they're out there and I would encourage you to look for those as well. Upcoming events on March 12th, uh, Creative Arts Therapy is actually sponsoring their annual conference. It's called a Conference on Domestic Violence, and the RSVP is here. It uh, really looks like a great program, and I encourage you to attend if you're interested in Creative Arts Therapy. And on March 29th, we have our Graduate Studies Open House, and again, we encourage everyone to attend. We'll have representatives there from each of the programs, so if you have any additional uh, questions after today's webinar, you certainly are more than welcome to come back and ask as many questions as you'd like. And here's the contact information with not only the web information, but also we have individual program directors in each, in each program. So in the counseling programs, you'd want to contact uh, Lori Johnson. In Creative Arts Therapy, the program director is Joan Bloomgarden. In Marriage and Family Therapy, uh, it's Nancy Cohan. And in the Rehabilitation Counseling Programs, it's Jamie Midas. And for any assistance regarding any of the graduate um, programs or if you're interested in finding out more information about the actual application process, you can contact our Assistant Dean of Recruitment and External Relations, Nicole Tuminelli. So now, if, if that's pretty much what I have to say. I'm going to open it up to any questions that you may have. Okay, well, the first question, a good question, what times are classes offered? Uh, that's a great question because, and, and particularly those people who are, this is their first uh, experience with graduate education. Uh, since our program, most of our students do go full-time, but full-time in graduate school is nine credits. Um, so many times what happens is our students work during the day, um, and then they would come to class at night. So our classes usually are 4.30 and 6.30 in the evenings, and we try, whenever possible, to have them be able to take two classes at least one night. So usually it would mean if you're taking um, full-time, it would be uh, two nights a week. Okay. Uh, what is the usual class size? That's another great question. Um, well, as I mentioned, we do keep our programs intentionally smaller than you would expect. And the reason why we do that is because, again, we're not training people just to go out and do some, something that doesn't have personal interaction. We're training counselors for the future. And so our class size is no more than 20. And the 20 would be more of the introduction types of classes. And by the time you get down to practicum and the uh, internship supervision, those classes are closer to six or eight. Are there any class, counseling classes offered online? That's also a very good question. At this point, there are a few courses offered online, um, but the whole program is not offered online. Um, so the human development course in marriage and family is offered online. There are some electives, um, and you will notice that some classes are um, hybrid, meaning that there are some times when you're face-to-face -face and sometimes you're online. Good question. The next question is, do students receive help with internship placement? Uh, again, a very good question. Uh, for depends depends is actually the answer. Um, for the mental health counselors and the rehabilitation counselors, 
uh, marriage and family therapy, and creative arts therapy. All those programs that lead to licensure, uh, yes, we actually are very much involved in the internship placement areas. And the reason why is because the university needs to have a contract with that area, and we need to make sure that we actually have um, the proper supervisor for you. And so, very specific. So we have a lot of contacts in the schools. Um, and what we usually have you do is go and interview with two, uh, sometimes three, and then um, we will assist in that process in the end. And another question, can I transfer credits from another uh, university? I, well, I will say not usually. Uh, it's a good question. I'm not going to say no, because occasionally there are classes that we are able to transfer from another institution. But usually you should count on no more than six or at the most nine. And they're not usually the direct counseling classes. So perhaps if you've taken a research class in another institution, we would transfer that in. If you've taken maybe even a human development class, we might transfer that in. But it's very unlikely that we would transfer in um, one of the primary counseling classes from, from the program. Okay, well, I don't see that there are any other questions. Again, I encourage you to come to our open house if you have any other questions, and this will be online um, if you want to hear it again. And feel free to contact any of the people who are on the screen right there. Everyone is here to assist you. Thank you very much.